All right, all right, you ready? Before, oh, after. Those are guns, baby. Zoom in on that cameraman. I am the cameraman. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to it if this is the first time you are seeing my face. Thank you for clicking on it. My name is JC and I like to do story times normally on this channel as well as some chit chats and the occasional rant. But every now and then I like to do more evergreen content for people who might be searching for answers to things I can perhaps answer. And today is one of those. I will be giving my honest review of Orange Theory Fitness. I have been going to Orange Theory Fitness for about a year now, and I definitely have some thoughts, both pros and cons. Spoiler alert, I love Orange Theory Fitness, but I do think that it has its fair share of cons that maybe you might want to know before committing to any kind of membership. So if you like videos like this or story times, which is my more normal content, or if you just like hanging out with me, make sure to like this video so I know to give more reviews on things that might be helpful or subscribe so you can join us for future videos. But with that being said, let's get started into the pros and cons of Orange Theory Fitness. First off, I'd like to say, sorry, I look so goth today. I, I have like lipsticks that just never make their way into the rotation and then it, I feel bad. So I just wanted to wear it, but now I feel like a moody vampire. I promise this isn't my aesthetic, but just, just go with it. Just go with it. We're already here. <laughs> So first, let's talk about what is Orange Theory Fitness. So Orange Theory Fitness is a gym, which hopefully you know that if you saw this video, unless you're like a regular subscriber and you don't know what I'm talking about. Orange Theory Fitness is the gym that I go to. But what sets Orange Theory apart from all of the other gyms? Well, Orange Theory Fitness, which I'll probably refer to as OTF because it is much shorter, it is a high intensity interval training workout where it consists of one hour long group classes that focuses on either strength, endurance, or power. Now in these classes, it's kind of split up into two parts where the first half, you will be on the treadmill focusing on cardio type of work. The second half is rower slash body weight training where you spend some time on the row machines or you will go and do some body strengthening exercises like with weights, kettlebells, medicine balls, and TRX straps. But what sets OTF apart from any other HIT training workout class or boot camp or CrossFit or any other group exercise class? Well, OTF has all of its users wear a heart rate monitor. So when you're in the class, your heart rate is displayed on this big old screen along with your name and it shows what zone you are in. Now there are five different zones. Gray, blue, and green are your resting to somewhat moderately exercising zones. Then once you get into the orange and red zones, that's when you're working out. That is when you are putting out some exertion and your heart is working. So everybody and yourself can see what zone you're in and how hard you're actually working during this exercise class to keep you accountable. Now, why is it called Orange Theory Fitness? Because you wanna aim for 12 to 20 minutes in that orange zone. That's your sweet spot where your heart is working and you are burning calories. For every minute you spend in that orange zone, you get a splat point. And this is just a little reward for showing that you're actually working out. But if you get 12 to 20 splat points, you win. You don't win anything, but the idea is that 12 to 20 splat points means you have an excess of post-exercise oxygen consumption. What does that mean? That's just a scientific -y way to say that you are burning calories even after you are done working out. So get 12 to 20 splat points, then for the next 24 hours, your body is still burning calories even though you're not working out anymore. So that's kind of the general idea of what Orange Theory Fitness is, the science behind it, and why we go for these orange splat points. So I'll go into a little bit more detail as I go over these pros and cons, but definitely wanted to give an overview of what sets this gym apart. One thing I'd like to note is you cannot film in these classes. So I really wanted to get like cool B-roll of me on the rowing machines, or you guys could see how freaking fast I am on the treadmill. Uh, but you can't film in there, which I want to respect their policies because I don't want anybody else feeling uncomfortable if I am filming. So just, just visualize what I'm trying to say. So keep that in mind. So my first pro would be their splat point system. So by wearing a heart rate monitor and seeing my heart rate on the screen, I have to hold myself accountable to actually working out. Now I am absolutely one of those people where I used to go to the gym and by just simply showing up to the gym, that to me was working out. 
I would go and I would spend an hour on the elliptical going like 0.2 miles an hour. I would just watch like an episode of Selling Sunset. Then I'd hop off and be like, whoo, great workout. Now I get to go reward myself with an entire Domino's pizza. I wasn't actually working out. The concept of your heart rate and these splat points is the first ever workout class that I've ever taken where I can visibly see how I'm doing and hold myself accountable. I'm like, shoot, I've only gotten two splat points and I need 10 more to go. All right, let's go, let's make it happen. And then I run and I push myself harder to ensure I'm getting those 12 splat points. I am clearly a very competitive person with myself. So seeing a number that directly correlates to the output that I'm putting towards the workout has been a game changer in terms of how I work out. The first con of Orange Theory Fitness is that while every class is different, every class is also kind of the same. And what I mean by that is you're gonna have a half hour block on the treadmills regardless, and you're gonna have a half hour block on the rower slash floor. So no matter what they do on the treadmills in terms of switching it up between, okay, today's an incline day where we're gonna work on inclines at a slower rate, or if we're gonna go sprint, walk, sprint, walk, there's different things that they do, but you're still gonna be spending 30 minutes on the treadmills. Similarly, they can switch up all your body weight exercises and how long you're gonna stay on the rowers as much as they want, but you're still gonna be on the rowers and on the floor for that other 30 minute block. Now, this is fine for me. I don't actually consider this a personal con because I don't mind all of those things. I actually don't like the rower at all. I actually hate the rower. No, this is a con because I hate the rower. <laughs> but if you hate the treadmill, if you hate running, if you hate anything to do with a treadmill, you're not gonna like this class because you spend a half hour on the treadmill no matter what. So I guess a con would be that they try to switch it up in terms of the actual exercises performed on each individual machine, but overall it's still the same machines being used in different formats, so that can get kind of tedious and kind of overbearing in terms of how repetitive it is. Pro number two is actually people's biggest con. And I don't disagree, however, I see it as one of my biggest pros, and that is that you get charged for not going to a class that you sign up for. Now, obviously, this is a con, because if you don't show up to your class, what the heck, you have to pay $15 for not going to class? But the idea is that you have to join the wait list and you have to sign up for each individual class. So by you not signing up, you took away a spot from somebody who would have shown up for class, so you should get charged for it. Now, I personally see this as a pro because you guys would not believe how many times I set my alarm for 7.20, it rings and I'm like, oh, forget it, I'm too tired, I'm not gonna go today. And then I go, oh crap, I have to pay $15 just to not go? I wanna go out for dinner tonight. That's my dinner. I'm gonna pay to not eat dinner, to not go to class? No, I get my butt up and I go to class. And that, again, has been such a game changer in my gym workout mentality because I have to get up and I have to go to class. Where before, when I was going to 24 hour fitness, I would skip it. I would sleep in and be like, I'll go later in the day. And then later in the day, I'm two paninis in and I'm tired and wanna watch The Bachelorette and I don't wanna go to the gym anymore. <laughs> So I actually really like that about it because it holds me accountable for going to the classes I signed up for. This of course could be a con because life happens. You could wake up super sick, you could get a flat tire, you could have to take care of your kids where you can't go to class anymore. When that does happen, make sure to just call your gym as soon as you can and let them know the situation. And I've heard that they might waive the fee one or two times, but if you make it a regular thing, then that's just kind of on you to not either schedule them out so early or to try to be a little bit more accountable by going to your actual classes. The second con is the biggest reason most people don't sign up for OTF, and that is that it is so expensive. Uh, you guys, it's expensive. I am on the Elite membership, which isn't even the unlimited membership. The Elite is only eight classes a month. That's two classes a week. And I am paying over $150. It is very expensive. Now, mind you, I do live in Los Angeles, so my rate is a little bit higher than if you were in the suburbs. However, my rate is also lower than other cities. I travel to Chicago a lot, and they are on a, I guess, a better level that whenever I wanna take a class in Chicago, I have to pay an additional $15 just to take a class there. So there are little charges here and there, such as taking a class at another location that might be on a higher level. You do also have to buy your heart rate monitor, which for me was $100. I know you can buy them used online, which I definitely recommend doing because that's an expense as well. The unlimited premier membership for me would be close to $200. I don't have $200 to spend going to the gym. 
So I'm not gonna do that. So Orange Theory Fitness is extremely expensive. And again, I think a lot of the pros outweigh the cons, but if you don't have $150 to spend on a finite amount of classes, again, only eight classes, it is absolutely not worth it. But back to the pros, my pro number three is that you are told exactly what to do in these classes. It is a very structured class and it's exactly what a person like me needs. I used to go to the gym again and see all these fancy machines and be like, okay, I guess I'll do that one for a little bit. Not counting my reps, just kind of experimenting with it being like, okay, I'm done. On to the next one. How long should I go on the treadmill for? I guess 20 minutes. All right, let's see what's over there. And there was no structure, no rhyme or reason. Now I would take group classes at say 24 hour fitness, but they were all very segmented in terms of, okay, there was a weightlifting class, there was a Zumba class, there was an aerobics class. OTF kind of combines all of those different group classes into one and they tell you exactly what you should be doing at any given time. So for example, during our 30 minute treadmill block, you're not just running for 30 minutes, they are guiding you through exactly what you should be doing at every time. So you'll learn this if you decide to join Orange Theory Fitness, but how it works is on the treadmill, you have your base pace, which is a base level run that you can comfortably run for like a half hour and you can still talk to the person next to you. You have your push pace, which is one to two miles per hour over that, and that's where you're kind of breathing heavy, you can't really talk to the people and you are running. Your all out is like sprint, that's maxed out where you are full on action movie sprinting. So those are your three levels. And you are told exactly when to be doing those levels. So they'll say, okay guys, one minute push followed by a one minute base. Okay, ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. You, you go and you click the six and you are on a push pace for one minute. Then they'll count down three, two, one, back to base. And so they'll tell you what to do and when. And again, those workouts do vary to where just today I had a workout where we were doing sprints and walks, sprints and walks. So we were like, okay, all out for one minute, walking for three minutes. Similarly, when you're on the floor and doing all these strength training exercises, they have on these lovely TVs, all of the workouts you're supposed to be doing, how many reps you're supposed to be doing, as well as your form. So they have little gifts playing of, all right guys, we're gonna do bicep curls. All right, and now you're gonna go onto the TRX strap and do tricep dips. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel that. So they tell you what to do, exactly how you should be doing it, how many, how long. And it's great because you don't need to be concerned about keeping track of your own time and when you should be switching things. So I really like that. The third con that I have is that they are limited class sizes. And this is another one that can be seen as a pro or a con, but there are only about, I think maximum 30 spots per class. So again, you do have to sign up for your classes kind of early to ensure that you get yourself a spot. If you don't sign up in time, you are added to the wait list. So because there's only a finite amount of spots in the class, it kind of messes with how early you can sign up for classes. And if you're mentally prepared of like, you know what, I'm gonna do a class tomorrow. Oh shoot, my time slot is all booked. Then it kind of sucks. Pro number four, at least at my location, they are the perfect level of being hands off. And here's what I mean by that. When I go to these classes, you know, I like to chit chat with people. I like to talk to people, but I'm not very great with criticism. And I'm not here to try to be a bodybuilder and have the world's best form, okay? But these coaches, they know your name. They'll go around and they'll encourage you and they'll be like, nice job, JC, keep it up. Like they keep you hyped up, but they're not going around being like, come on, row harder. You can row harder than that. Let's go, let's go. That's your squat. You could go deeper than that. Squat, more, give me five more. Four more, that's how you got? That's how you got, you little bitch. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> what happened there? But I hate coaches like that. I hate coaches that are way too intense or are way too hyper-focused on form to where it feels like they're critiquing me all the time because then it's just like, leave me alone. I'm just here to exercise. I'm not here to try to win a bodybuilding competition, okay? So they are the perfect level of giving you encouragement, you know, high-fiving you after class and learning your name, but they are not there to hyper-criticize you, to point you out in front of others, or to push you beyond a level that is uncomfortable. The next con would be their class times aren't entirely inclusive for everybody's schedules. So for me specifically, I work from home and I'm kind of a wake up late, stay up late kind of person. So for me, the ideal class time would be 10 a.m. That would be my sweet spot because I can wake up, go to class, then come back here and start my day in the afternoon. 
the class times are more catered to a very nine to five schedule where I think the first classes start at like five in the morning, catering to that type of work crowd, which is totally fine. The last class for me that I could go to is at eight in the morning, because other than that, there's a huge chunk of time where there are no classes and then there's a night class. And the 8 a.m. one, it feels tedious waking up that early, again for me, based on my own schedule, that I usually have to come home and take a nap. Whereas if they were just a class two hours later, it would be so much better. So keep this in mind if you have school, if you have childcare, if you have kind of a more interesting work schedule, that they only really have classes in the early morning and then later at night. So not totally inclusive compared to like a gym schedule that's open 24 hours, but something to bear in mind. The last pros and cons are just little things that I wanted to note. They're not hugely detrimental to whether you will sign up for a membership or not. But a pro is that they do have lockers and showers, which is super nice. Again, I walk to my gym, so I've never needed to shower there. But for those morning classes that I was talking about, people use those showers because they will then get ready and head off to work right after the gym. So that's always really nice, a nice little amenity. And it's also nice because you get to keep all your stuff in the lockers. You don't have to worry about taking it with you around the gym. And then the last little thing that I'll kind of complain about, just because it happened this morning and I was kind of annoyed, is you are at the mercy of the coach's music. You don't get to wear your own earbuds. You don't get to bring your own music because you need to hear what they're calling out to you and what you should be doing. So you can't bring your own headphones. So you have to listen to their music. And this morning, the coach that I went with I don't like, I can't sign up for another one of his class. I just can't do it. He does like EDM music. And I'm not the biggest fan to work out to that. And I know a lot of people are, but for me, it just sounded like the same song for an hour. There were barely any lyrics. It just sounded like bass drops every 10 seconds. And there were like no, no melodies. I don't know. I'm just not a big EDM music fan. And so I'm sitting there like, oh, give me something. Conversely, my favorite trainer, Jasmine, shout out Jasmine. She has the best music. She will combine like old school throwbacks with like boy bands with like current top 40 hits. She has songs where every song that comes on, you're like, oh, I love this song. And it gets you excited. It keeps you motivated and it takes your mind off the workout. So keep that in mind you're at the mercy of the music of these coaches and sometimes it can make for a not great experience Ugh, like this morning I just didn't I just didn't like that <laughs> but overall thoughts do I like Orange Theory Fitness no I love it but again it's the only gym class that I've taken where I can visibly see that I'm holding myself accountable and that I'm actually physically exerting myself again super expensive. It is a huge, huge expense. And I have had to make sacrifices in my regular life to accommodate for it. So I don't go out to dinner as much as I would like to. But to me, it's so much more worth it because I just feel healthier and I feel myself getting stronger. I guess I should have started this video by saying that I am not a good worker outer. I am not like some gym rat who used to go to the gym all the time and I was trying something new. No, I hated going to the gym and I would do these random boot camps. I would do these random CrossFit gyms and I wouldn't see immediate results and so I'd quit. But this, I understand the sustainable aspect of consistently working out, making new friends at the gym, but also working out in a way that I enjoy. So that was just a, that sounded a lot like I was dancing around the fact of, yes, I love Orange Theory Fitness and I would recommend it to you. However, I hope that these cons were helpful in perhaps making a decision if you are a fence sitter of getting a membership. But that's gonna be it for my review of Orange Theory Fitness. I think this video was a lot longer than I intended because I'm a little chatty Kathy sometime, but you know, the more information I can put out there for people who are considering spending almost $200 a month, um, you know what, the better informed decision they will make. So I hope it was helpful. Again, make sure to like this video and subscribe if it was helpful or if this is the first time you're seeing my face, I appreciate you dropping in and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Toodles! funny story that happened at the gym last week was they go around and they hand you like a like a sanitizer wipe because you have to wipe down your station every time that you're done using it. I guess that's a pro, very clean. You have to wipe everything down. But I was walking on the treadmill and the coach was coming around, passing around these wipes. So you have to like reach your arm back and grab it. For some reason, I am not coordinated. I like tried to look as he was doing it and I stumble and I fall and I fell off of the treadmill Everybody saw it, everybody was like, oh my God, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. It wasn't like a dramatic fall, but I definitely like fell off the treadmill. And then a couple days later, I was in class and it was a different coach. And she said, careful guys, I heard somebody fell this week. So we wanna make sure we're staying safe when you're grabbing these wipies. And I was like, no, 
it was me. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> but yes, very, very clean, very clean gym. So that's a pro. <laughs> Just don't fall off the treadmills. <laughs>